Hi everyone, this is Hero. We're here doing another talent review for the new talent system coming in Dragonflight. And this video is going to be about Holy Priest. I'm not going to go over everything to do with this talent calculator. I just want to talk a little bit about elements related to Holy Priest and one specific idea that I think is kind of interesting given some of the history of this spec. So as I mentioned in my other video covering Disc Priest, there's some things that I'm disappointed about when it comes to the talents, and that's specifically some of these talents which seem to not really give the oomph or promise that you would expect having made it to the bottom portion of a talent tree. You can see here with the Holy Priest setup, you can reach two portions at the bottom if you wanted to, depending on your build, and you definitely give up a lot to do that. I like this tension of giving up a lot of stuff to get deep into a tree, but the payoffs guys don't seem to be resonating for me. Specifically, uh, you know, things like Crystalline Reflection, Light's Inspiration, Charitable Soul. If this is your payoff moment for specifically Disc Priest, then, you know, Crystalline Reflection is really going to be good when shielding people is good, like when spending a lot of time shielding. And maybe that's going to be fine, but it also means it's maybe uh, <laughs> our word shield's going to be broken. So a little bit problematic on the the whole class side. Um, but overall, I like where they're going with this direction. There are some things that are uh, a little bit annoying. A Holy Nova, an improved Holy Nova, and Holy Nova while you're shielded. This kind of stuff is maybe a little bit frustrating. But in any case, I'm, I'm okay with the direction that Blizzard's going. I think they have some work to do to make a lot of these choices really pop. It's 2022. We can make some really interesting talent trees. We don't have to uh, only replicate an old TBC style where some of them are useless, nor do we need to have the modern style where we only have, you know, seven choices to make. Um, we can come up with something a little more dynamic, I think. Anyways, the build I want to look at today is kind of your DPS Holy Priest. You're like, wait a minute. No, let's not do this again. But historically, Holy Priest has had some moments where its scaling of specifically Holy Fire and Smite damage has been so high that you can pump out an immense amount of single target damage. And given that they're giving us Twins of the Sun's Priestess um, and Power Infusion, unfortunately, is here, but nevertheless can maybe be something that we utilize in a rotation that offers you steady amounts of damage and isn't really built on any significant uh, throughput buttons that we have to plan around or CDs, I think uh, we have some options here. So here's what I'm really thinking this build depends upon. Imperial Blaze, if they leave this ability and the corresponding talents that are around it in place, and if Smite is tuned to make Holy um, feel like it's a good button to press without this kind of stuff, I think we have the recipe for a really strong DPS class. Here's why. This ability reads, specifically the passive, whenever Holy Fire is reapplied, its duration is now extended. This means you can stack up the debuff on one target, especially because pressing this 30 second CD gives you three instant cast holy fires, which are automatically, if you press it on, on a single target, going to stack up the duration. Now, holy fires duration lasts, the debuff lasts about six seconds. You can see up here, I think it gives it this. It's a 10 second CD in the current game. And all the other pieces that go together with this help to make that even better. What you have is basically permanent dot from the holy fire. Now, I'm not saying that that's broken, but once you put the pieces together, having this permanent holy fire dot allows us to do some pretty crazy stuff. Let's work backwards. Look what Searing Light is giving us. Smite's damage increased by 30% uh, 30 against targets that have the holy fire debuff. Crazy. Holy Nova as well, but that's uh, something that we can talk about for maybe some interesting Mythic Plus stuff for splashing it with the use of uh, improved holy Nova and tools of the cloth over here. Rune of Fire. Holy Fire is now connected up to reducing our Holy Word Chastise. Interesting. Remember, Chastise here is a one-minute CD reduced by four seconds by Smite. And now if you add in Rune of Fire, four seconds by Holy Fire. Burning Vehemence. Reduces the cast time of Holy Fire by 50%. Great. And reduces its cooldown by 40%. So that would take it from a 10 second CD to a six second CD, pretty much guaranteeing that you will always have the um, 
the passive form of this running, or the, excuse me, the passive damage amp to smite running, because if we cast it on CD, and even if it has seconds, seven seconds left, you're basically um, completing the loop and making sure that you'll always have the debuff up. Then we come down here, Holy Oration, we get Apotheosis, tying that together with Divine Words means that we have a chastised portion to the build that's going to offer us some interesting uh, ideas. First of all, the one that's interesting to me is this increased damage, uh, and Smite obviously can apply Holy Fire, again, just ensuring that you have either Holy Fire on all kinds of targets or that you complete the loop. But how much damage is this gonna offer? Is this a one minute cooldown burst window ability? Press uh, this, hit Chastise, we get a huge damage amp to Smite, and now we're smiting targets that have full Holy Fire and really destroying things, possibly. Apotheosis and Light of the Naru just allowing us to get our Chastise back, back quicker means um, we have um, you know, more opportunities to line these things up with Divine Words. I mean, we can take Divine Star, whatever. I was just kind of filling out the rest of the tree to, to make sense. Then, okay, how, do, how else do we scale this? Well, we could scale it by adding in Shadow Fiend. That's one option I looked at, although I'm not sure if it's as enticing because we are not casting as much uh, Mind Blast, though we could if we wanted to. I was kind of fooling around with this stuff up here. Uh, maybe Mind Games actually makes sense because it's a longer CD and it does a big chunk of damage. It offers us the opportunity to get a little bit of DR in rating, uh, which might be interesting. Um, and Shadow Word Death does less damage to us, so maybe this is something that we use in our executes a little more frequently. What about Smite? Is there anything else? Well, we get a 50% damage bonus to Smite for all of the specs, which is awesome. And we get Unwavering Will, which is going to mean if we're topped, our smite is going to cast 20% faster. Smite's 1.5 seconds, so that brings it down to 1.2 second cast time. We're, we're running into the uh, GCD with that kind of cast speed, but you can just imagine how many smites that are being buffed you're throwing into these targets. Finally, there's this kind of cheeky idea of maybe tossing in shields, or while you are shielded, gaining more damage on our smite. Of course, I would think this is kind of maybe the sort of thing that you might maintain if you had a uh, movement to do. So uh, if you're moving between mechanics, you shield yourself hoping to maybe have that little moment to give you 10% more damage um, for your smite. That's the, that's the basics of it, guys. This amounts to quite a lot of scaling on these two items, Holy Fire and Smite and uh, I guess ch Chastise as well, all building together into that with Holy Word Reduction, uh, a CD if you'd like in Divine Words, depending on how much it's amplifying our, um, and it's not a one minute CD, how much it's amplifying our Chastise. I think um, I did some calculations and uh, not, not mathematical cal calculations of damage, but I was thinking about like order of spell usage and how long you could uh, keep this up. And you can open with things like Divine Words, before the boss is pulled. Imperial Blaze, before the boss is pulled. You Power Word Shield yourself. And Apotheosis, you precast Mind Games. And then you go Power Infusion into Chastise to get our buff up from Divine Words. We have three Holy Fires Instant Cast ready to go right in a row. Bang, bang, bang. That gets our duration of Holy Fire at 21 seconds for the dot. And then we can Smite four times in a row into one more Holy Fire before Chastise is back off CD. And just you can just go like crazy with that kind of a rotation, smiting three or four, four or five times, fitting a Holy Fire in there to get Chastise. And every minute, we get access to Divine Words. And every 30 seconds, guys, we get three instant cast Holy Fires right in a row. Holy Fire typically has done a lot of damage. It's basically at least worth a smite and probably worth a little bit more given the dot. Altogether, guys, it makes for a really kind of fascinating build. I know it has nothing to do with healing, but um, this is the kind of stuff that's going to come out of the woodwork, and I'm sure it's going to get changed before we get to these final numbers. But one of the awesome parts about this style of talent tree is you get access to this kind of cool stuff. So I'm looking forward to testing some new things. Maybe I'll talk a little bit more about the healing side of Holy Priest in another video, but I wanted to get this one out to you guys. Catch you again next time.